week 12 of the fantasy baseball season, and here's a few hitters I looked at this week. The first guy, Christian Walker of the Arizona Diamondbacks. So Walker, he's been heating up over the last few weeks here, and he's been a pretty hot pickup the last couple weeks as well, added an 8% of fantasy weeks, but still available in 53% of leagues on the season here for Walker. 19 home runs, 38 RBIs, 33 runs scored, at 208 average, and a 309 on base. So I know his home runs are the main thing here with Walker with the batting average not being good, but still a decent on base. RBIs could be a little bit better, obviously, with 19 home runs on the season here. But over the last couple weeks, he's hitting in the 260s with a 385 on base with four home runs and 10 RBIs. So right here, obviously, getting an everyday opportunity for this Arizona Diamondback team that obviously don't have many options and power options. And Walker amongst the league leaders in the National League with the home runs. If you're looking for some power... And a guy who could get on base at a decent rate for on base percentage. I think he's a good ad. The last few games for him. June 19th versus the Twins. Two for four. Two homers. Two RBIs. Two runs scored. June 20th at the Padres. 0 for two with a rib. June 21st at San Diego. Two for five. June 22nd at San Diego. Two for four with a homer and RBI. June 24th versus Detroit. One for three with a run. June 25th. Versus the Tigers, 0 for 2 with a run. And June 26th versus Detroit, 1 for 4 with an RBI here is Christian Walker. So Walker playing good baseball. And if you need a power hitter, he's definitely a good ad this week. The next guy is Andre Jimenez of the Cleveland Guardians. So Jimenez, I've been mentioning him for weeks here. And this is probably the last opportunity fantasy owners are going to have to get Jimenez. Only available right now in 35% of fantasy weeks. So on the season here for Jimenez, 8 home runs. 35 RBIs, 24 runs scored, 6 stolen bases, a 315 batting average, and a 360 on base. So right here, Jimenez, the on base to batting average obviously ain't all that great on the season, but this guy's a hit machine. He was a former top prospect in the Mets system till they traded him in the Lindor deal last offseason, and he's paying dividends for this Guardian team. The last few games here for Jimenez, June 19th at the Dodgers, 1 for 4 with a rib. June 21st at the Twins, 2 for 5 with an RBI, a stolen base. June 22nd in Minnesota, 1 for 4. June 23rd at Minnesota, 1 for 3. June 24th versus the Red Sox, 3 for 4, homer, an RBI, stolen base, 2 runs scored. June 25th versus the Red Sox, 1 for 4. And June 26th versus Boston, 2 for 3 with an RBI. So Jimenez right now, He's on a seven-game hit streak, and he's playing good baseball here. And he qualifies at two weak positions in fantasy baseball, second and shortstop. So if you need some help at those positions and a guy who's going to give you good batting average and he's showing some surprise pop as well this season, I definitely would give him an ad before it's too late and he's owned in over 70% of fantasy weeks. The next guy is Jorge Alfaro of the San Diego Padres. So Alfaro, he's shown signs over the last few seasons, on and off between the Marlins and the Padres here. But this season, pretty good baseball, Alfaro's playing. Six home runs, 21 RBIs, 18 runs scored, a stolen base, a 287 average, and a 322 on base. So obviously here, his on base to batting average ratio isn't that good. But like I mentioned, he's been hot the last few weeks. Three homies, nine RBIs, six runs scored, 350 on base, and a 381. So he's a guy that's going to swing early in the camp. He's an aggressive type of hitter. And catcher, we know, is obviously a weak position in fantasy baseball. But right now, he's available in 70% of fantasy leagues. And he's getting the everyday call behind the dish here for the Padres. So the last few games here for Alfaro, June 19th at the Rockies, 0 for 1. June 21st versus the D-backs, 2 for 5 in RBI. June 22nd versus the D-backs, 2 for 5 a homer in RBI. June 23rd versus Philly, 1 for 4 with an RBI. June 25th. Versus Philly, one for four, two RBIs. And June 26th, versus the Phillies in that one, one for five in that ball game. So right here, Alfaro, he's getting the opportunity. He's making the most of it over the last few weeks here. And right now, he's a guy definitely will look to it. And if he fizzles out, you drop him. And that's the name of the game here. You pick up the hot hand. And if the guy goes back to mediocrity or does nothing for your, for your fantasy team, you just easily could drop him. The next guy, Ahmed Rosario. Of the Cleveland Guardians. So Ahmed Rosario, he's been picking things up over the last couple weeks here. And another guy, this could be the last chance for fantasy owners to go out there and get him. Only available right now in 41% of fantasy weeks on the season here for Rosario. Two home runs, 19 RBIs, 36 runs scored, eight stolen bases, 
274 batting average and a 309 on base. So right here, all throughout his career, he's never been a big on base guy. He's been a guy that swings early in the camp, a guy that don't draw walks. But the funny thing is he always puts the ball in play, it seems like, more often than not is Rosario. Only 38 strikeouts in 252 at-bats on the season here. In the last couple of weeks, he's white hot. Two home and seven RBIs, three stolen bases, 13 runs scored, a 385 average, and a 400 on base. So right now, Rosario tearing it up for this Guardian team. And this Guardian team, so far, that trade hasn't looked totally lopsided with them in the Mets last offseason. They got Jimenez and Rosario for Carrasco and Lindor. Guardians were going in the rebuild situation, and the Mets going the other way. And this deal looks like it's worked out for both teams right here. So the last few games here for Rosario, June 19th at the Dodgers 0 for 5. June 21st at the Twins 1 for 5. June 22nd at the Twins 4 for 5. A homer, two ribs, two runs scored. June 23rd at Minnesota 1 for 3. June 24th versus Boston 2 for 5, a stolen base. June 25th versus Boston 1 for 4 with a run and a rib. And June 26th versus Boston 0 for 3 with a run. So right here, if you need some runs scored, stolen bases... An occasional pop. Rosario is a decent ad this week here. And another guy that qualifies at short and outfield, which definitely is a plus at the weak shortstop position. The next guy, Tommy Pham of the Cincinnati Reds. So Pham, I mentioned last week as a big pickup for fantasy owners. And he's continuing it again this week here as Pham. Only available as well in 43% of fantasy leagues. Added in 7%. So on the season, 10 runs, 30 RBIs. 43 runs scored, 5 stolen bases. A 246 average and a 342 on base here for Fan. But over the last month of the season, he's been pretty solid. 5 homers, 12 RBIs, 2 stolen bases. 17 runs scored, a 269 average and a 356 on base. So this red team, we know they don't have many options on this roster here. But Tommy Pham, he's been a good veteran presence for this weak offensive red team here. And he's also a guy I could see at the trade deadline come August 2nd or before, then get traded to a contender as well. So the last few games here for Pham, June 19th versus the Brewers, 1 for 2 with a run. June 21st versus the Dodgers, 0 for 3. June 22nd versus the Dodgers, 0 for 4. June 23rd versus the Dodgers, 2 for 5, a homer, 3 RBIs, 2 runs scored. June 24th, at the Giants 0 for 4, June 25th at the Giants 0 for 3, and June 26th at the Giants 1 for 4 with a run and a rib. So right here, he's playing good baseball, is Tommy Pham. He's getting the everyday opportunity, and he can help fantasy owners in many aspects. RBIs, home runs, run scored in stolen bases. He'll give you a decent amount of a little bit of everything here as Pham. And he's definitely a guy who would go out there and get this week the next guy, Nathaniel Lowe of the Texas Rangers. So low last season, he got off to the hot start with the Rangers, and then he fizzled out for the remainder of the season, was low. But this season, he's been playing pretty good baseball, especially the last month on the season. 10 home runs, 31 RBIs, 29 runs scored, a stolen base, a 276 average, and a 323 on base. But over the last month here, seven home runs for low, 17 RBIs, 17 runs scored, a 317 average, and a 350 on base. So right here, he's still available widely in 61% of fantasy leagues. Here's Nathaniel Lowe. And if you need first base and utility help with some pop and decent batting average, I think he's a good add this week. So the last few games here for him, June 18th at Detroit, 1 for 4 with a run and a rib. June 19th at Detroit, 1 for 4 with an RBI. June 21st versus Philly, 2 for 4 with a homer and a rib in that one. June 22nd versus Philly, 0 for 3. In that ball game, June 24th versus Washington, 1 for 3. June 25th versus Washington, 1 for 3 with a homer, 2 RBIs. And June 26th versus the Nets, 2 for 4 with a run and a rib. So right here, he's hitting the baseball, he's putting it in play. And also, he's a guy that these pitching, these pitchers aren't going to pay too much attention to. What better hitters on this Texas roster than Lowe? Obviously, you got Seager, you got Simeon, even though Simeon's been off to a horrible start this season, but he's been getting it going over the last few weeks. And obviously, Adolis Garcia, who's been a big hitter for Texas. So Lowe, he fits in good, and he's a guy under the radar right now and definitely can help you in many categories. And he's a good pickup this week. The next guy, Andrew McCutcheon. Milwaukee Brewers and McCutcheon. It's been tough the last few seasons here for the former MVP in his Pittsburgh Pirate days. And this season here with the Brew Crew, six home runs, 30 RBIs, 28 runs scored, five stolen bases, a 249 average, and a 318 on base. But over the last two weeks here, McCutcheon's picked it up, three homers, seven RBIs, 
Nine runs scored at 325 average and a 450 on base. So McCutcheon, this guy still has power and he still could drive in runs last season. I know he played in a band box in Philly, but 27 and 80 for McCutcheon with the poor 222 average. But this season, the average is up. The stolen bases are pretty much matched. Last season, six. This year, five. And the home runs are the only thing taking a hit here. I don't think he finishes the season with 27, but I still see McCutcheon possibly hitting 20 on the year. So the last few games here for him, June 20th versus the Cardinals, 0 for 4. June 21st versus the Cardinals, 0 for 2. June 22nd versus the Cardinals, 2 for 4 with a homer, 2 RBIs of run scored. June 23rd versus St. Louis, 2 for 4 with a run. June 24th versus the Blue Jays in that one, 1 for 3. June 25th versus the Blue Jays, 1 for 3, a homer, 2 RBIs. A run scored in June 26 versus Toronto, one for five with a rib. So right now, playing every day. The DH helps as well in the National League this season where he could go in the field and DH is McCutcheon. And right now, he's available in tons of fantasy leagues. So right now, while he's got the hot streak, 12-team leagues are deeper, I look to get him. And he's out there in 85% of leagues. The next guy's is Leno Sosa of the Chicago White Sox. So Sosa called up a few days ago here. For the White Sox. And so far, it's still early, but he's a touted prospect in the system here. So, so, so far in the early going for him, one for nine with two runs scored and a 250 batting average and a 300 on base percentage here for Sosa. So, Sosa qualifies at second and short. And we know those are two weak positions in fantasy baseball. So, right here, the White Sox, they have some intrigue here for Sosa, who they called up from double A and they think they're ready. Here for the major leagues, especially with Yo Makota out with injury here. Now he's the next man in line here, Sosa. And he's available in 91% of fantasy leagues, but the White Sox are giving him an opportunity. And this guy in the minor leagues, he was putting up good numbers with Sosa in 62 games. He had 14 home runs, 48 RBIs, a 331 batting average, and 84 on base. So he was putting up solid numbers. It's his time now here in Chicago, obviously with the injury to Makota and Danny Menick, who tore his ACL, and he's next man up here. So Sosa, 12-team leagues are deeper. He's definitely an option, and he's a guy many pitchers aren't going to pay attention to. Batting ninth so far in the early going in this White Sox offense, but I definitely would take a flyer on him, especially the good numbers he had in the minors, and plus he qualifies at second and short, which are weak positions. The next guy, Gary Cooper. Of the Miami Marlins. So Cooper, I mentioned them last week. And this season, he's playing pretty solid here for this Marlins team. Playing every day as well, qualifying at first in outfield. On the season, five homers, 35 RBIs. 23 runs scored, a 309 batting average. And a 372 on base. So right here, Cooper, he's getting on base. He's showing not much power. But the RBIs and batting average is still pretty solid on the year. But the last month... He's been red hot here. Three homers, 19 RBIs, nine runs scored, a 380 average, and a 424 on base. So this Marlins team, we know they're not going anywhere this season here. And Cooper's getting an opportunity, and he's making the most of it. 12-team leagues are deeper as well for him. He's definitely worth an ad. And maybe in 10 if you want to go that route. He's available in 63% a week. So the last few games here for Cooper, June 20th at the Mets, 1 for 4. June 21st versus the Rockies, 1 for 5 with a rib. June 22nd versus the Rockies, 2 for 4. Homer, 2 RBIs, run scored. June 23rd versus the Rockies, 1 for 4. June 24th versus the Mets, 1 for 3, 2 RBIs. June 25th versus the Mets, 1 for 4. And June 26th at the Mets, 0 for 3 with an RBI. So right here, he's at top of the small ones offense. Batting second or third, usually, is Cooper. And he's got a good batting average, and he's driving in a decent amount of RBIs. On the season. So if you need utility help or an outfielder or even a guy to come off the bench and a play occasional and it'll help you in a few categories. Cooper is a solid head this week and the final hitter I look to head this week Sneeko Horner of the Chicago Cubs. So Horner last season he showed some good flashes and now he's back on the fantasy radar over the last few weeks. On the season here for Horner, four home runs, twenty two RBIs, twenty runs scored, six stolen bases, a two ninety one average. And a 324 on base. So right here, they designated Jonathan VR for assignment a few days ago. Here's his Cub team. And Horner, he's going to take the reins now as the middle infield or even playing some third base as well. And over the last month of the season, he's taken advantage as well as Horner. One homer, nine RBIs. 
13 runs scored, four stolen bases, 305 average, and a 350 on base. A Horner, he puts the ball in play. I know his on base to batting average ain't great, but he's only struck out 20 times in 196 at bats. And like I mentioned, he's going to get the everyday opportunity for sure now, even more with Jonathan VR off the team and designated for assignment June 20th at Pittsburgh 2 for 3, June 21st at Pittsburgh 0 for 3, June 22nd at the Pirates 1 for 3 with a run and a rib, June 23rd at the Pirates 3 for 5, 2 runs, 2 RBIs, June 24th at St. Louis 2 for 3, a homer, 2 RBIs, June 25th at St. Louis 2 for 4, and June 26th at St. Louis 2 for 4 with a run, so right here Horner is on a five-game hitting streak, and he's got four games in a row of multiple hit games. So he's red hot. He qualifies at second and short. Weak positions like I've been mentioning throughout this video. And he's available in a whopping 84% of fantasy leagues, and he's going to help you with stolen bases. He's got some pop, and he's a good add this week. So that's a few hitters I look to add here for week 12 of the fantasy baseball season.